that's, that's basically, and, you know, like I said, I probably said it the wrong way, but it, it's been a while since I've seen the interview. I, obviously, you must have seen the interview, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. Uh-huh. And, uh... Why aren't you the best, low-impact, highest cardio workout ever? Why aren't you the best? Why aren't you the it's not yoga, but it is low impact. It's not calisthenics, but it is high cardio. It will hold back and Uh, now, this brings you up to another subject now. Uh, in your wrestling career, from the time that you started out till your WWE days and even your TNA days, uh, you've had a lot of feuds with uh, many different people. I mean, I can I could list every superstar just by <laughs> their possibly is. I remember way back when, of course, I've been to Sturgis, South Dakota a few times because they have family down there, whatever. Uh, back in, what was it, 98, I believe? I think it was 98. It was you and Jay Leno, I guess Hulk Hogan, and Eric Bischoff at that time. Yep. <laughs> You've had a lot of feuds now. Uh, if you, in your mind, who, who was your favorite person to have a feud with or a wrestle with? Well, Randy, without question. Randy Savage. Yeah. Because Randy, you know, he was, he brought over intensity. And he's also the guy who moved, moved me up to the next level. And when he took the diamond cutter, you know, in the middle, at the end, at the end of that pay per view in the main event, the place went insane. But it was really my feud with the NWO. Yeah. That was a lot of fun because it was the entire NWO. It was me against the NWO. And I enjoyed wrestling against the whole Ravens flock, too. Yeah. Against Ravens flock it was exciting. And those guys took 10 different diamond cutters, and the place would go nuts. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the Randy Savage feuds were very, they were very physical. They were very brutal. It was a few of the year in 97. Yeah, so yeah. Like that at all. Did you ever uh, enjoy wrestling with Eddie Guerrero at all? I loved the wrestling. Eddie, Eddie was a transitional guy for me that made people go, wow, that, that, that guy really can wrestle. It's, it's not just Eddie. Yeah. You know, and Eddie's great with everybody. He, he was, he was a phenomenon. Eddie did the greatest diamond cutter ever. Yeah. Out of a power bomb. Uh, but uh, he was—he he was one of the most greatest gifted athletes. I was so glad to see he finally—he finally got everything he deserved yeah. towards the end of his career. Just you know, the shame didn't last longer. That's all. Yeah, I mean, it, it really did. I mean, it, I think well, it's been a year now since it, uh, since he passed away, and it, it really sucks too. The fact that you know, it, it sucks just the fact that you know he's a guy that basically now. Or even last year, he was in the prime of his career. He could have been another. He could have won another championship. And I think he was actually on that roll, real close. Because I'm sure, actually, the match that they were going to have uh, in, in Minneapolis about a year ago would have been a triple threat match between uh, Batista, Randy Orton, and Eddie Guerrero for the heavyweight championship. And I think Eddie Guerrero would have probably won that championship at that time. Well, you never know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, back to back to you. And uh, like I said, man, I, you know this is. I've been ever since I found out that I was able to talk to you this weekend. Uh, it, this has been like a dream come true. I never thought in a million years that I'd ever be talking to DDP. You know, <laughs> it is very weird because uh, I'm just a regular guy, just like yourself, and uh, I uh, I've been doing this radio thing for a little while now, and I've I've uh, interviewed a guy that uh, uh, you probably know, uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine. He was the first guy I ever interviewed. And back, uh, and this leads to another question, because I know you've been asked this many times. Uh, in 1990, WrestleMania 6, of course, back in the Toronto Sky Dome, you uh, let them use your car or the pink Cadillac yep. or whatever, and you were you were driving it, right? Yeah, well, that was my first. That was my first WWF appearance. So. Okay. And that was, uh, it was pretty wild. How and did the next time I was in the same okay. position? I was wrestling Christian. Yeah. And, yeah. Know, Sixty-eight thousand people, so it was pretty cool. How did it feel, though? I mean, to come back after so many years to the Sky Dome, and then you know, 
that actually just to have the chance to wrestle there, you know. Um, it was great only because I only because I got to wrestle with a guy like Christian. Yeah. Because uh, Christian is, is is a phenomenal power, and he loved playing the bad guy. Yeah. And we had great chemistry together. I mean, that, that, if you look at those matches, that was one of the top three matches on that card. Yeah. And you know, as far as the people being into the show. Yeah. So uh, it, it, that was one of my last. In fact, that was my last big match I had before I retired from WWE. Yeah. Yeah. That was and. Uh, um, another another question that I was going to mention to you now. There's been a lot of you know hater players, so to speak, uh, you know about wrestling. They'll they always you know even a few people I was talking to after I told them I was going to interview you uh, said you know wrestling's fake. There's no real wrestling or whatever. And I and I'm not saying that you know I'm not like a crazy crazy intense fan where you know I'm gonna you know get all nutty about everything. But uh, you know there is some real life to wrestling. Obviously you guys work out. You work your asses out, actually, basically. You're touring. You're on the road nonstop. Uh, you had many injuries in your career. Uh, to, to say to people or to prove to people how real wrestling can be, would you mind sharing some of the injuries that you had while wrestling? Sure, but, yeah, but anybody who's listening, just fall off your chair. Just fall off your chair. It's only about a foot. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> tell me what happens. Yeah. Does it hurt? I try falling four feet. Five feet, fifteen feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, it hurts. You can't fake gravity. Yeah. Uh, the wear and tear in your body uh, will eventually will give way because we're human beings. We're not cyborgs. Yeah. But the amount of abuse your body can get used to taking is crazy. But at some point, it comes up to you. That's why I do YRG, and that's why I started to have to do that YRG workout because I had to get my body because as it gets it gets pounded and pounded and pounded. You get, in this, by sitting at a computer, you get less and less and less and less flexible. Yeah. Flexibility is you. In wrestling, you get pounded, you get flexible, less flexible, and you get stiff. <laughs> so you're less flexible and stiff. So the bottom line is, eventually you're going to tear something. I tore both rotator cuffs in my shoulders. Yeah. Both of them. And I have operated on both shoulders. I tore my meniscus in my left knee which means I, I, I couldn't walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they, they had to scope that out. Then I had ruptured my L4 and L5 in my lower back and my the, the, the two discs in the lowest part of your back, which enables you from enables you from bending over. Yeah. So I had three doctors telling my wrestling career was over. It was why it was yoga first but yeah. then what would become Y R G that gave me back my flexibility in you. And in my neck, I have five, six, and seven. That's what put me out of the WWE. It was dense because it was too dangerous yeah. to wrestle and maybe take a big bump and, and become a quadriplegic. You yeah. want to take a chance. You wanted me to become a color commentator, but I just didn't, you know, okay, I just wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. Yeah. And um, long story short is that all those injuries came from wrestling over a period of time. So uh, your body does take go through a lot of abuse. And, you know, you see these guys falling from all these heights, taking these falls. People think it's like, oh, what did they think it's a little, uh, um. Bad show. Not even that. They, they think it's a, uh, like a, you know, Star Trek, like there's a, like there's a barrier around the Oh, yeah, yeah. Go down before we hit it. You go boom. Yeah. You can't fake gravity. And it's predetermined. You don't win anything. You get awarded stuff. Yeah, okay. You get, just like you don't win the Grammy. Yeah. You get awarded the Grammy. Yeah. You get awarded the Oscar. You don't win it. It's like when it's, um, it's like when it's your time, when it's your moment, and you know it's your moment that this is your time to finally earn everything that you work your ass off to get. Right, but if you don't work your ass off, you don't get there. Some guys get there without working their ass off, but yeah. you know, they're few and far between. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that, I'm, I'm glad you 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 mentioned that because uh, I'm glad you uh, were kind enough to share your interest because there are a lot of people that. There, there are true intentions.